so uh, these are actually mug shots of my team uh, back at right half the company we started was called right half com uh, back in december 99 and uh, uh, most of these are actually Bombay students at the time. Uh, the way we hired was we went to the lab and said, uh, "Chalo, Amare Sarab," and they didn't know what, I mean, where are you taking me? Oh, you're going to work for us, write some code. That's uh, a lot of <laughs> actually got built that way. Uh, you know, at the coffee shack, at the software lab, and so on. And uh, we took mug shots of everybody as if they were coming to jail. Uh, so the thing um, that is very unique to I think uh, students from institutes is, and there's the exuberance of youth and the whole uh, feeling that nothing is impossible. You know, the world is not uh, quite unique. It's some. It's a lot of energy that um, uh, an idealism, as uh, Roshan calls it. Uh, which uh, is the fuel to uh, you know the activities in an incubator or an entrepreneurship environment. The other thing you know uh, that's taught to us students in good institutes don't take anything for granted and you question. It. And I think that's also an essential ingredient to with with an original idea. And um, Thirdly, I think what students uh, uh, end up doing do a bunch of activities where um, on campus these are activities that are not business related, but uh, it could be a cultural, activity, it could be a play that you do together, it could be a technology event that you started together, it could be an entrepreneurship, and a little success there um, can go along. And actually, uniting people. Uh, so success is, I think, a big unifier. Even small successes uh, help bring people together, and they want to do it all over again. So, for us, uh, a few people who organized uh, and started this festival called Tech Fest, and um, through Tech Fest, there was a bunch of activities that had happened: uh, entrepreneurship contest, the ESL. Some of those were affiliated with Tech Fest. Now they're officially affiliated, but at the time it was starting, a lot of th these things were starting together. So those were some of the seeds into let's come together and start a company. And I think every institute has where the guys who are most likely to be entrepreneurs are sharing successes every day on campus. And, they and uh, the, the fourth thing is, See, we all realize our uh, responsibilities when we go out in the real world. In the in the college environment, although we do have possibilities outside, so the feeling for good or for bad is you have lesser to lose. Even if you actually have a lot to lose, you feel like it's you know as small or big a decision as going and doing some extra activity. Uh, now, once you grab this is experiences as a student becoming an, becoming an entrepreneur. Once the reality hits and uh, you, know, you know, you you have to cope with that. I think there is a lot of you know, nothing to lose element. So that's how I would characterize the bunch at the time, quite honestly, that started right half. Um, that's Professor Fatak there at the corner. These are uh, the three founders of right half. On Jan 30th, uh, 2000, um, this is a conference room in the, uh, in the city. Um, Rakesh Mathur and Nandan Nilekani, uh, the two alumni from IIT, were part of the and this is where uh, the agenda was to decide what to do with these guys to start a company as students. What happened that day was, if I could one day when uh, I, 
was the day when I guess, you know, Tata formally decided that we will have an incubator and we formally decided that we would have a company uh, um, that would be supported by the incubator. And, uh, we became entrepreneurs really um, and it's uh, the one way road, um, I think the path to becoming an entrepreneur is a one way road, that's the day we were on that road. And the other an institution to uh, be comfortable with being a stakeholder with making entity is, is uh, something that I think was born uh, then. So uh, I don't know if everyone can see, but that patch on the ceiling on the right is <laughs> Third office of IIT business. First, we were in the math department, a little room. Then we moved to a bigger room in the math department. We moved to the physics department and uh, a much bigger space. So the day we left, uh, coconut and the champagne. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Point here is early successes in any new initiative, whether it's a new incubator, a new startup. Um, for the incubator, I think this uh, is about April 2000. Is a uh, lot of media interest in the incubator, which helped spread the word about this initiative student support startups uh, uh, with alumni and institute involved. <clears throat> we launched our beta product um, um, into a test market. Um, we transitioned out of the incubator, uh, which is actually a milestone both for the incubator, where we outgrew the little space of the incubator and went out in the real world. It happened in the middle of 2000. And uh, uh, many companies uh, got added to the incubator ideas um, going in. Um, these are uh, the team members actually sleeping in the office. Um, we used to pretty much spend 24 hours a day there, maybe restroom breaks in between. Um, uh, the some of the values um, of the incubator, uh, which uh, I think have um, stuck on since the first day, are uh, I think wealth creation in India. Um, I'll talk more about this in the next slide, where um, you know. Uh, I would say my personal anecdote and uh, you know, probably there are more people like me. But you know, wealth creation in India uh, was uh, uh, something that was at the core. All the ideas that made it to the incubator and even till date, I think are ideas which uh, um, and, and they are based on innovation of some disruptive nature. Even today, you know, all the companies in the incubator won't have, you know, your traditional bread and butter ideas. There would be an element of, um, you know, uh, innovation to it and a new product idea to it. Not a lot of services companies. If there are services companies, you know, IP would be at the core. Um, so uh, I think that's another uh, ideology that has stuck with the incubator, uh, and I think that's a great thing. Um, yeah, a lot of companies which are focusing on global markets, um, you know, from day one. A uh, lot of companies focusing on um, on technology disruption, uh, and 
um, I think another ideology was, you know, there's the, as a technology institute, uh, there's the business of technology which was not uh, being uh, fulfilled as much. And with the incubator, you know, the business of technology is something that um, IIT would be deliberating about through the incubator. <coughs> so lastly, just want to share some personal um, experiences about how this has transformed me. So uh, to, to introduce myself a little bit, actually, um, so I graduated uh, from IIT Bombay um, with a bachelor in computer science um, in 2000 and uh, started right half uh, w with some batchmates uh, in my final semester, so six months before I graduated. And then about a year after graduation, we sold right half to uh, a private company in the Silicon Valley, uh, California. And then I was in the US for seven years after that. And I recently moved back from the US um, six months ago to start a company back in India, an Indian company focusing on Indian consumers, uh, et cetera. So uh, I think what the incubator, uh, incub the incubator definitely uh, played the biggest role in defining me as an Indian entrepreneur. Um, without the incubator, I remember, you know, back before starting the company, um, the next best idea for me was to go work for a Silicon Valley startup. And I was pretty focused on that. I got some opportunities there as well. Um, and um, I think if the incubator had not come my way and the investors or alumni who participated through the incubator and invested in the company, I would probably have, I would have gone to the Silicon Valley like I did. But I think the bug that stuck with me because of the incubator was to come back and start a company in India. So the Indian entrepreneur bug was definitely something, you know, I think the incubator planted. So it made a big, uh, imp you know, whether I become successful in it or not, or whether I stick to it or not, only time will tell. But um, that is something that made a big impact on me. And I would like to believe there are many people like me who are business minded or entrepreneurship minded who would otherwise um, end up outside of India, uh, but through this uh, setup can, uh, you know, it's a real opportunity for them to make an impact in India. And I wouldn't consider myself particularly nationalistic or patriotic. Uh, I think it's, it's a pretty practical thing that, uh, you know, if you have the, an entrepreneur outside of uh, campus, uh, I believe is more respected in Silicon Valley than in India. And I think the incubator uh, goes a certain distance in countering that and sort of, uh, uh, certifying the validity of, of this aspiration of, of you know, uh, starting a new idea, um, you know, and not going for a job or uh, going to study abroad and uh, the traditional path of, of an IITM. Um, the second thing which really stuck with me was, I think the business values that um, uh, became part of me. Uh, for life uh, because of the type of people who were involved with uh, righthalf.com. So our uh, primarily, you know, our lead investor. Uh, so Rakesh Mathur, who's a IIT Bombay uh, batch of 78, graduating batch of 78 alumnus. He was the angel investor in Right Half. <coughs> and he, uh, uh, He's a seasoned entrepreneur, he's, he made his money, he's uh, a great investor. And uh, him being on the board of directors and being sort of our mentor was uh, 
a pretty uh, significant thing. I mean, some, some things that we learned, um, you know, in the time uh, we, we spent together was, uh, I think the value of put the company ahead of yourself uh, or protect your company, not your job. Um, uh, you know, that, that is something, you know, which I learned uh, because of him. Um, I think uh, he was very, um, you know, people used to actually taunt him for betting on a bunch of kids. Uh, and we used to behave like kids also. Um, uh, and it's a very high risk investment. But he was, he always treated us like business people. He would never preach to us or he would never, you know, patronize us. He would always treat us as, you know, the shareholders in the company that we were. And, uh, uh, and um, um, I mean, that, that I think went a long way um, in, in, um, uh, in understand, you know, inculcating a similar value. So his, his uh, advice used to be, uh, if you're doing something for the first time, you are going to make mistakes. And if you make mistakes, you, one thing to do is to try and minimize mistakes. And the other option is to um, or make new mistakes every time. So you maximize new mistakes. Uh, so his, his thing was in a startup where all you have is your agility. If any idea makes sense, you know, 10 others are doing it. Um, you don't try to slow yourself down to try and minimize mistakes. You try and make newer mistakes every time. If you repeat mistakes, it's a problem. But you actually try to maximize new mistakes. That means you're moving uh, pretty fast. So that is also something, you know, these are words, but these are things that become part of you. Uh, and, and I think it was, if I had to do it any other way, I would still start a company, you know, with Rakesh on the board and with Professor Fartak by my side because of the business values that have stuck with me since then. The biggest thing I think I learned as an entrepreneur back then was what I need to learn to be a good businessman. Um, and we made lots of mistakes and we learned the hard way. We weren't particularly successful, I would say. We got a good exit, we have a good story to tell. Um, but you know, it didn't make us millionaires, for example. It didn't affect the lives of a million consumers, for example. Uh, it didn't create a million dollars of wealth for the world or you know, a hundred million dollars. <laughs> right. So the, the most valuable asset was actually the list of things that we need to learn to become good businessmen. Uh, lastly, I think the IIT Bombay incubator uh, is a legacy now, I would like to believe. And I'd be lying if I said, you know, being associated with that legacy and uh, using that brand has not helped me in life. Um, so that is also something that I've taken away from the experience. So that's basically my story, you know, um, as a member of the first team of IIT Incubator. So um, from becoming an entrepreneur from a student, I think, um, the biggest learning was, uh, you know, uh, the difference between theory and practice. Um, when we're put into situations where, uh, you know, decisions about people, decisions about money, decisions about business are involved, we end up uh, making decisions that are based on instinct and not theory. And we all do that uh, in high stress situations. We um, follow our instinct. Now, instinct is something I mean, there's a nature part of it, and there is a big part of it, which is experience. So as students, we would discount, you know, the 10 years experience, McKinsey guy who's saying all that, um, or, you know, those uh, gray-haired CEOs uh, doing stuff. Because it's all about, you know, we have the, we can think the same way. What they're saying is they're stating the obvious. You know, there's nothing insightful particularly. As a student, we would think that way. Um, you know, about what they're saying, and we have the energy and passion and, you know, the ability to move faster and stuff. 
uh, but I think the biggest takeaway was that um, uh, experience, uh, you know, uh, contributes to inherently contributes to instincts which uh, result in making good business decisions. So nothing can replace experience. Um, and to answer your question, sir, uh, I think what I would expect from an incubator within an institute is to uh, uh, hold students to more uh, brutal real world standards. Uh, it's still a protected environment. It still feels like, you know, if you fail a course, you're still there in the hostel and you're still there in the department and they accept you and they're like, they pat your back and say you failed. It's not that way in the real world. It's uh, way more brutal than that. And people are not as forgiving as uh, people in educational institutes are. So I think the incubator to some extent protects you. Yes, yeah, so right half of the brain is the creative side. So our uh, business was about uh, creative ideas and creative people. So creative people could express their original ideas through our website and reach an audience. That was the premise of the business. So right half of the mind was.